A typical red flag exercise involves a variety of attack, fighter and bomber aircraft, reconnaissance aircraft, electronic warfare aircraft, superiority aircraft, airlift support, search and rescue aircraft, aerial refueling aircraft, command and control aircraft, as well as ground-based command and control, space and cyber forces. Adversary Red Forces are composed of the 57th Wing's 57th Adversary Tactics Group flying F-16s from the 64th Aggressor Squadron and F-15s from the 65th Aggressor Squadron to provide realistic air threats through the emulation of opposition tactics. These aircraft are painted in the various camouflage schemes of potential adversaries. The Red Forces are also augmented by other U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps units, flying in concert with the 507th Air Defense Aggressor Squadron's electronic ground defenses and communications and radar jamming equipment. The 527th Space Aggressor Squadron, an active duty unit, and the 26th Space Aggressor Squadron, an Air Force Reserve Command unit, also provide GPS jamming. Additionally, the Red Force Command and Control Organization simulates a realistic enemy integrated air defense system and includes the use of enemy hardware and live ammunition for bombing exercises within the adjacent Nevada test and training range. appear to be heading uh, directly at us. I'm coming. The original antenna red flag was to provide those first 10 combat missions to the young cap wingman. I want to provide competent and capable qualified air crew to the combat air forces. I want them to have a credible sparring partner. You know, it's high stress. You have to make a lot of decisions quickly. The intent is for you to have a hard problem to solve so that when you go to combat it's not as difficult as what you saw here and leave here as you know, the baddest kid on the block. 